So we're here tonight on Tuesday, February 11th, and this is a planning board discussion on the form based coach EIS scoping uh, work session. So we're, we have a, a scope uh, before us. It's been amended. There have been several comments that have come in from the public, from members of uh, the committee, uh, planning board members, etc. And our idea was to have this discussion so that we could uh, formulate uh, a memo from the planning board to the town board um, uh, to give the town board our thoughts in connection with some of the extensions, expansions, or whatever we might want to uh, discuss. So here we are. Um, uh, Sabrina, perhaps you could just tell us a little bit more just the framework that we're doing on this, and then I understand that the town board has given it, there's an extension now for 221? Yes. February 21? Yep. Close of business, right? Okay. So that gives us a little bit of time, 10 days from now. Happy um, to grant that request. What's that? <laughs> we were happy to grant that. Okay. So, how thoughtful. Uh, thank you. We much appreciated because we were uh, we had our tongues hanging out. I think we we met last time last week, and I think there were three days from last week's meeting. I was like, <laughs> and we had just seen it. So, uh, thank you very much. I think it uh, would be helpful. It's great. So, so the the intention of this evening, and so the planning board is aware that Karen Anton, the chair of the conservation advisory committee, is here. Um, and uh, John Rosenblum from the ERB is here tonight, and they're here to hear your conversation. Mostly listen. <laughs> um, We're used to being corrected, so it's okay. <laughs> we have very low uh, you know, pride in what we write. So um, the intention tonight um, is so the planning board could discuss the scope. Um, I'm going to remind the planning board that we're here to actually discuss the scoping document. We're not here to talk about development on town property specifically. We're here to focus on the process that the town board has elected to take in developing the form-based code. The scoping document is intended to be, if you will, a table of contents for the environmental impact analysis uh, that will be conducted to help inform the town board as to the environmental impacts of the legislation that they are considering. We have a consultant team who will be looking at all of the um, aspects of the project. Um, town staff will be reviewing documents that they produce prior to it becoming a draft document. Um, but the intention is really for that consultant group, which is a combination of architects, planners, engineers, folks who specialize in the type of analysis that we need to undertake, they will be considering all aspects of the environment in relation to the, t the code, the new code that the town board is considering adopting. There is a version of the code on PlanNewCastle.us um, right now. That version of the code is the most recent draft. So is it, that version 3? It is version 3.1 to oh. be exact. Okay. Um, the intention and the expectation is that there will be a draft four, but that draft four will not come until after the environmental impact statement is completed. Oh, okay. Okay, because if you will, this board has spoken a lot about impacts. You've talked about what happens to traffic. What is that impact? That impact... You, let's use traffic as an example, will be analyzed through the environmental impact statement. And it will present um, the impact. There will be suggested mitigations to help mitigate that impact, which may result in changes to the code. And I'm going to throw this out there. It may result in removing a fifth story on town-owned property down to a fourth story because we just cannot compensate for the traffic congestion. That is complete conjecture on my part. I'm using it as an example, but just to inform you as to how the code may change. Um, so that's where we are today. I would like some direction from the board. Mr. Brownell has submitted comments via writing. We've also spoken on the phone. I have before you uh, the track change document. I am more than happy to prepare a track change version with your comments to submit to the town board, or we can do a memo which highlights those areas of your concern. I would appreciate if you could give me direction on that so Felicia and I can prepare what you need within a timely fashion for the town board. Well, if we can uh, go through the comments this evening and do it in some sort of manner that you know, makes sense, Maybe we could just do that and not have to go through, uh, you know, the additional step of, of a memo, which is just going to regurgitate the same thing. So, if the town board is okay with receiving in this manner, with just thoughts and, and on a um, 
marked up version, that might be fine. Uh, I'll, I'll defer to, to board members if they want to really it's just fun. commemorate everything with a, a, a memo. I think the memo would be rather lengthy and very technical because we'll be correcting clauses and additions and it, uh, anyway, whatever. Well, the, the, That's my intention, thought. the intention is that tonight's discussion will inform a further discussion and hopefully agreement to send your memo at your meeting next week. Right. And we've re reserved Good. some time on your agenda to continue this discussion. Now, when we last spoke last week, uh, one of the things that we were all hoping for was to get from the uh, planning team uh, some of the assumptions that they uh, I have not gotten still them. haven't received. Those. I still have not okay. received them, so okay. we unfortunately we don't have that to work off. Okay, that was rather material too. Yeah. Okay. Um, so from that in our, should we just assume worst case scenario on the as far as. Everything, there should be an assumption of worst case scenario. For what we're doing. Un under SECRA, there, we are to look at the most significant environmental impacts. The scope of work is crafted to do that. It does not matter whether you're talking about the addition of one housing unit or 3,000 housing units, okay? The table of contents should address all of the issues that need to be considered under both of those scenarios comment on your range. If it is 3,000, then everything becomes much more critical. Correct, and that is what the analysis will determine, just how critical it becomes. But the other issue was, even as we assume 3,000 units, and I think Dick raised this last time, or maybe Tom did, depending upon some of the other assumptions, even with a 3,000, you get different results. So, for example, what are going to be the assumptions on parking? Right. What are the assumptions that you're going to have on traffic and, and whatever? And um, Or build out on the commercial. Are we going to assume that commercial will be just limited to the areas where it's required uh, or not? So those kinds of things, in terms of the assumptions, uh, I don't know what worst case means because we don't have some of those items. If you have, and I don't know, I, I defer you folks on this, but depending upon uh, which model we assume on parking, for example, uh, this could be really difficult. I think Tom raised last time that our current standard is X, and the assumption for parking that might be used uh, by the parking fellow uh, was a little bit less stringent. So what does that mean? Uh, is it realistic? Is it not? I, I have no idea. But it seems to me that that's important for us to know I don't, this worst case thing is also one of these uh, anomalies that I, I have a hard time with because we could assume a worst case scenario which is so unrealistic that it, it's, it's not very useful to the town board in, 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 in helping formulate the, uh, well, maybe it's, well, we I know it's required by law, but man, what, I, what are we doing between? You know, as far as I ask the worst case scenario as I'm thinking about it, it may be not as important as we think because if we're, if we're doing, if we're doing an outline for 500 dwelling units or 1,000 dwelling units or 3,000 dwelling units, we're still studying all the same things, right? Everything that would be studied for 500 DUs would also be studied for 3,000 DUs, yeah. wouldn't it? Well, but I think yeah. your, 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 your results are going to be very different. Though. The, the results, results are going to be going different. To be well, different. We're just establishing what we are studying. Right? Correct. We are not establishing results tonight. Correct. You have the, okay. the town board has a host of professionals who will be establishing the result, who will be figuring out the results. And then I'm assuming we all get to question those results. I would assume you yeah. would as well. Okay. Just okay. <laughs> Listen, the, the consultant team is working. They are charged with delivering a draft environmental impact statement. As you folks are very familiar with, a draft environmental impact statement is critiqued, reviewed, dissected by interested agencies, by professional staff, to make sure it includes all of the information and we understand the basis for it. That is where the final environmental impact statement comes in when there are still outstanding questions. Then you produce a final environmental impact statement, which is why environmental impact statements are this big and a final environmental impact statement is this big. So, um, yeah, so um, it, it seems to me that I think, you, unless I'm mistaken, you probably pretty much have to model and test the full build out because that's what the zoning allows. So you, you can't say, well, yeah, we didn't mean that development over there. So I think you have to do the whole thing. 
And that's where you get the realistic brackets about what really makes sense. And it may turn out that <coughs> 3,000 housing, I don't know what the number is, 3,000 is like way out of line because the town just can't handle it. And the bracket on the upside is 1,500. And you work from there. And, and if, the, if the legislation needs to be adjusted back down to that, then that's part of the yeah. legislative process to change all of that. Let me just, yeah, there is some math that, to me, is full stops on numbers. So if you have 3,000 dwelling units, and if you look at the 2010 census, where the average number of people in each house is three, two adults and one child, all right, that would give you 3,000 more children in this sector right here. It's Population of town would balloon. <laughs> well, that's the so, issue. So, right? so, so folks, let, let, let me let me reframe you a little bit here, okay? We are required to look at the maximum impact. We are required to look at all of the other um, characteristics and impacts of that. I, I really don't want to belabor this conversation about what that max is because I don't have the assumptions. I don't have that right, data for right, you. Right, I right, know right. you want it. Right. I do not have it for you. Okay, so then... Let's focus on the, on the sure. outline. So then we can go through when we get to my words. I'll add some adjectives and everything sure. else. Sure. Well, so uh, I'm sorry to, to hesitate to get right to the outline uh, because... I guess I'd, I'd, I'd like to go back to sort of understanding, first of all, what the foundation document is. And the foundation document for the whole initiative, unless I'm mistaken, is the comprehensive plan. Correct. And the comprehensive plan has in it a set of objectives for the downtown, right, for the hamlet. And that's residential, and it's commercial, retail, however. The, there are no numbers on this, but the right. objective is to try and vitalize the hamlet and by putting these things And to preserve our historic resources, to maintain and improve our open spaces. Right, and all, all that, things. all of those elements it, of the scope. Exactly, and okay, so my question then is, in the process of doing the EIS, are all of those elements of the scope going to be measured against? Yes. The objectives in the comprehensive plan. Yes. And how is that actually, how is that actually done? For in, just for example, if the comprehensive plan says we want to put, just make something up, more recreation in the downtown, <coughs> in the hamlet, sorry, mm -hmm. in the hamlet, and the zoning doesn't actually physically show where that happens. Zoning says that, yes, you can put open space in the downtown because the way these zones are crafted, you can put residential, you can put open space, you can put anything in there you want. Not anything, but there are brackets on that, but there are alternative land uses you can put in there. So how do you decide whether the zoning actually physically meets that objective when it's not described in, in, in detail in the proposal what it's going to be and where it's going to be? For me, this is... Um, it's like uncharted territory because we're used to seeing EISs from developers. And we ask them, all right, where is this going to be and yes. how much? And uh, we're very hard about that. And as a process, as a result, I think the process we've been going through with developers is successful and the town gets pretty much what we want. Here, I, I'm not trying to, I'm suggesting that, that there doesn't seem to be enough specificity if we tie the EIS specifically to the elements that are in the comprehensive plan for the Hamlet, how do, we, how do we measure it? Is there a way to actually pull that back and say, well, you know what, doing more open space, for example, in the Hamlet is not an objective of this legislation. The objective of this legislation is to get residential in the Hamlet and more commercial in the Hamlet and be specific about that. Because mm -hmm. I'm concerned that once you open the gate to, well, and we want to do all these other things, there's nothing in zoning which certifies that you're going to do it and how much, and, and you can't even test it as a consequence. So I'm wondering if you, if, if you just sort of narrow, pull back the objectives of, of the legislation and test only that, that we may be more successful. And, 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 and this is what the scope does. It looks at <coughs> legislation. Okay, I can tell you when it comes to open space, 
What that translates to in this legislation is that the town board will not allow Wreckfield to disappear. It's Town Hill property. The community has already identified that as a valuable resource down here through the comprehensive plan which means there's no proposed development or the build-out analysis that's being prepared for this. There's an assumption that that remains as rec field forever okay. more. So that's a good example. So, so does that mean that it's not, it's zoned protected? No. No, we do not currently in our town have open space zoning. That is not being considered as part of the form-based code. Right now, that property is town why, held. Why wouldn't it, if, I mean, if, some, if that's viewed as so sacrosanct, why would it not be viewed as part of this legislation to create that kind of zone? I to say it? this as a policy that was decided years ago. There's a different town board in office right now. That information will be carried through based on the comprehensive plan, the work that was done. If the town board feels as a mitigation for this zoning code that we need open space zoning. I'm not, as a, I'm not saying as a mitigation for the zoning code. I'm saying as an integral part of the zoning code because in carrying out <coughs> the themes and the aims and the missions of the uh, of the comprehensive plan, one of them was specifically, not as mitigation, mm -hmm. but oh, was recreation open space in the hamlet. Mm -hmm. So if that is one of the competing aims sought to be you know, carried out from the comprehensive plan through zoning, why wouldn't that be a part of the zoning? Itself. And, uh, these, they're, just as just as a you have a recreational yeah. zone, you have I mean you have a residential zone, you have commercial zone, you have industrial zones. Some places have a recreational zone. Can we have an that? open space zone? Well, well we here's the scope. Right. Here, here's here, let me let me put some reality. Redfield is not a separate parcel yeah. from Town Hall. Oh. Okay, it is part of one parcel. About 22 acres, 23 acres. Right, so. and so we would have to separate it as a parcel. Well, that, that doesn't answer the question, though. I, well, and I would, it's I would, not I, being considered. Here, here's the thing. If there's a way to add it into the scope, and that is a recommendation, we can add it, you know, we you could, can You could make it. the class, the zoning classification, you could make it broader. You could make it government slash open space slash recreation, something that's basically not susceptible to commercial development without separate legislation at the town board level or something like that. So if you if you carry it into the zoning code itself, if Sabrina, can I can I offer something here which maybe will be helpful is that there could be a potential confusion between a zoning code and a town plan. This, uh, I'm sorry, just let me see if I can follow this. Well, we have zoning codes that exist here, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't tell us actually the plan of the town. They just say where you're allowed to build what and how much. This is a zoning code. This tells you where you're allowed to build and how much. The next step in the process, which one could argue should have come first rather than next, would be to say, okay, this is the town that we want to have, this is where we want the parks, this is where we want this, have a town plan, and then build a zoning code up from that. Instead, this is going the other way, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Zoning codes are written this way all the time, everywhere. I think that one probably needs to be aware of the consequences to that as you go forward, because sometimes zoning codes tend to take over, and because something can build there, it gets built there, and you have to be very careful about that. In this particular case, it's town-owned land, so the town has the the ability and the prerogative to say, no, that's always going to be a ball field. So even though it's zoned for four-story, five-story development, it's just not going to happen there. So this is what I'm going to do. Can I just ask one thing? Sure. I'm sorry. Just to follow up and think what you're kind of maybe trying to say, or maybe not, is that, and maybe you also answered it, my question, which is, in looking at all this, Besides rec fields, to me, open space is also like a park. I mean, we have a little pocket park. That's about all we have. Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious um, if there's a way of saying 
and perhaps there isn't because now we're also dealing with privately held property, if there's an area that should just be like a small park or not uh, not a rec field or, or whatever, mm -hmm. doesn't have to be large, but is that being considered it, at it, all? It's part of the legislation. Let me, let me okay. point out here in, in the mm -hmm. scope. So let's go back to the scope. Okay, so right now under the scope there is a section community facilities and services. Under this section, existing condition, open space and recreation. This will be a discussion of open space and recreation within the area under study today. Anticipated impacts, open space and recreation. What is this code say in relation to that? Okay. I have added consideration of open space zoning and I will put another consideration, consideration Consideration of um, open space contribution in relation to new development. Okay? Which I think that that, whether it, it will end up belonging right. in this section, like, but I think that covers the concerns. Right, like for instance, if you're anticipating a, a building, um, t saying, look, you know, there has to be some incorporation of impervious surface, Correct. as you said, green space, whatever, so that it's not just building after building. Absolutely. After building. And, and there, I can tell you right now, there are considerations in the way the code is written today for just that. So it is not a solid building wall. So, right. The question is, when the analysis is, is being done and considered, this is a separate aspect of that consideration and if we need to improve it we'll know where it stands and what changes need to be made to make sure we're hitting the mark with those other goals of the comprehensive plan so in, in this particular case <clears throat> if then it turns out by the process of the uh, going through the EIS there arises a real concern that needs mitigation which is insufficient open space, recreation space, whatever is in that category, um, that comes out of the plan as a result of all these people moving here, the legislation could be redrafted to, to put a provision in the legislation that says if you're going to build, you know, 100 units, you have to provide open space or recreation somewhere within the district. That would be the kind of mitigation that That is exactly does, correct. Does the regulating plan that comes with this, that they supply, does that call out open space on it? Um, it calls out or existing of... open space. There are requirements. You cannot build completely all over your lot. Right. Um, there is an there is a provision for recreational space. Okay. So by default, there. does that start to create open spaces on the uh, individual it absolutely, pro parcels? Yes, it does. Um, but right the, now, our code mm -hmm. offers a payment in lieu of recreation space. Right, like most yeah. communities. Right. Yeah. Yes. right, and so that may not be good enough in this instance because we're dealing with a more dense area. Sabrina, so, when you say our code, do you mean the existing code the existing or what's code. in the proposal? No, the existing code, you our code pay. today. You can pay in lieu of the provision of recreational space. Was it Chapter 113 under something? Correct. So, okay. Okay. okay, but Tom, sense. you are 100% correct in understanding how that would change the code. Can I go back to uh, actually the scope? Yes. Please. And uh, this would be on page four of my sheet. I, I think it's towards the beginning. It's under section uh, the Roman numeral two. And um, uh, under uh, B2. Okay. Somewhere in here. <coughs> Okay, there it is, B2A. Um, my suggestion is that description of assumptions resulting in the build-out scenario, I think that we should put in including alternative assumptions. So um, uh, I'm happy to talk about those now, although it might be better later on, but there's all kinds of, again, we've talked about different parking assumptions, different traffic presum uh, presumptions. Um, and uh, these need to, I think, need to be explored because if we just do this uh, one level exploration, we're going to, I think, come up short and we're going to come up with uh, perhaps a solution that doesn't quite uh, match. 
So it's not just whatever these guys are coming up with their assumptions, but they really need to consider alternative assumptions um, so that we know, for example, what does happen if there is more um, commercial development than is required in the code? If there is um, <coughs> you know, uh, whatever it might be, you know, uh, within the fo within the code itself, whatever different way we can develop this. Uh, in particular, and I don't know if I hit it here, but one of the major themes I had considered throughout this for the alternative is, again, I think we're looking right now as it's presently uh, defined very narrowly and one of the things I took from the comprehensive plan was and what we also took from the economic um, uh, person and, and the, uh, the, uh, the planning group is that you know commercials is difficult, retail is difficult, housing is going to add a certain <coughs> element that we want, it's going to add diversity of housing, we want that, that's all part of the comp plan but we also talked a great deal about socioeconomic vitality and I think one of the elements that really needs to be explored, and you can do this in a generic manner, I don't know what it is, but there should be a generic study that says what happens to the town if the town includes, wherever, probably in public property, a public asset, a public attraction. What happens to the traffic? What happens to the parking at that point? Because ultimately, you know, as much as people talk about diversity of housing and more housing, ultimately for the entire community, what we're really looking at is what's going to make this more vital. It's not that someone else is living in, you know, a couple more apartments. It's that we have some place to go to. It's a destination. So I think the generic entry should be a generic destination. And Eric spoke about this when we first heard about him. That was really one of his big pitches and was certainly one of the reasons why I was most impressed with him. And I think we need to have that as right in the beginning as the alternative. What happens, by the way, as an alternative, not just the housing, not just the commercial that's being proposed by the form-based code, but uh, complementing that, what happens to our plan, what happens to the uh, uh, impacts if, in fact, we have a generic public asset down here that's really going to attract people to this uh, hamlet. So a, a way to, uh, I agree with you completely. Maybe. I don't know what to call it, but I, well, right. I can say it's generic asset. And, and it, it, it's impossible to call it anything but that right now, right? right. Okay. But, Do you want but to look at the wording up there? Can I just follow up on that? Instead of trying to identify even categorically what that might right. be, you could maybe instead say, okay, this is the max, these are the impacts of maximum build out. When we get done with this, there's no more room for more cars, there's no more room for more parking. We're pretty much locked up. Maybe instead of, of trying to identify what that is, do it backwards and say, now we want to back out of that and leave a window for something Correct. we that's don't a, know. That's exactly what I meant. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Exactly. I, I completely agree. Yeah, it's, it's like an escape valve, if you will, but you, you have to have it, it seems to me, because that was really, you know, I never heard, I went to all, a lot of those community sessions, I never heard anyone yelling and screaming, I have to have a 16-foot setback. I never heard anyone say, I have to have a five-story building down here. I have to have a setback on the fifth floor. I mean, these are the things that we're talking about that are the details, and that makes for a great plan. But what I heard over and over again was a mix of housing, a mix of commercial vitality, a reason to come down, a destination. We want this hamlet to become a destination. Now, whether it's restaurants, sports, this, that, or anything, public, theater, I don't, you know, who knows. But again, a generic asset, uh, I think, is exactly as you said, to back that out. Because I think we have to make sure we have room for that. Because I think ultimately that's that was really one of the salient uh, goals of the of the comp plan. Yeah, I got to add to this. I mean, I know we're getting into the weeds. No, but, not really. But, I think but, it's really listen, I'm listen. Just... I, here's the thing. I I don't think that anyone would disagree with what you're saying. But I think we're crossing over to what comes out of this analysis instead of focusing on what needs to be considered going into the analysis. Okay, I, it, noting that comment as part of the build-out scenario, as part of the assumptions, is perfect. Okay, we're carrying it too far and already going to the back end and, and all that. We need to focus on the beginning. 
Okay, and, and I think that there will be opportunity for you to comment on the back end, okay. but it's difficult to comment on the back end without having the analysis. And I'm going to say that over okay. and over again. And I defer to you guys if, if you think that ultimately is where that belongs I don't know. later I, on. Listen, I, th yeah. the language is here to benchmark right. it. It is not just me who will be reviewing this, but the consultant team. Right. So we will. Your, your comment is noted. The town board will receive it and adopt it. Can we go to the note IA at the top of the page? Yes. Maybe, you know, I know in the new process, a lot of the role of us kind of gets changed. Mm -hmm. Can they study? Can we have them look at that? That's what this is. Oh, that's our us coming Comparison out. Comparison okay. of existing process for approval, for review and approval of development. Okay. Um, and proposed process. Within the code, there's a proposed process. Mm -hmm. There's a call out here to focus on public involvement and what are the changes in public involvement. Right. Okay. So this was actually a comment. Bob, your comments. I have accepted the track change version that was the town board has last seen as of February last Friday. And these are your new comments on top of that. I am, uh, let me move to page, my page five. Anybody has anything else on page four? I mean, there, there are other things on page four, but they come up in more detail later, later on, yeah. right? Yes, right. Um, so on the subject of land use and zoning, uh, you can take land use, the comment applies to both, but is there a way to, first of all, under A1B, the uh, surrounding area for this uh, initiative is described as within 200 feet. And it occurs to me that maybe we ought to be studying something a lot bigger than that. I mean, this is going to affect adjacent neighborhoods, not just adjacent neighbors. And I'm wondering if, especially west of, uh, of uh, North Greeley, that whole neighborhood, would act, which actually looks down on, the hamlet is something that visually will be impacted by it, and I don't know to what extent they actually use those roads to get in and out. Um, but it seems to me that the change in land use, residents living down there, might affect their neighborhood either positively or negatively. We won't know, but it seems to me it ought to be maybe looked at in a broader area. We're just not talking about a development project, we're tra talking about transforming a, a whole hamlet here. So do, is it 200 feet from the whole the area? Perimeter. From the perimeter. Yeah. Yes, so that might, well, we go all the way up the hill. Yeah. So it's 200 feet beyond that. that it's might, 200, 200 feet, feet from the area. All, all directions. All yeah. directions. So, so it's not from one point in the center no. of town, it's from the outside of our from study. From the boundary. Area. Feet of the entire like, district. It's like the three lots, four lots. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a whole neighborhood. Well, and, and in the uptown area where more tall buildings really are sketched out, and then the visibility of, of that building is much more than 200 feet. Yeah, you know, so the view shed is will change much more up there, right. actually, in my opinion, than down in the valley. Air pollution will be higher in the valley, but yeah. You know, but, but the vision. You already had somebody come in and say they don't want to look down on. on anyway, I, I don't disagree with you. It goes all the way up to uh, Bedford Road. Yep. To the intersection. No, no, it does not. Well, it doesn't go continuously up there. No, there is a there is a, there is a stop. There's a, there's a break. There's a break. There's a break. There's a break. Yeah. Going up the hill. There's a break. Right? Correct. There's a up break. To like, like, yeah. Yeah. Between Castle. There's an area and around Walgreens. The the, the the zoning district. Hang on, I have it on here. Oh, I was think I was talking. I'm sorry. Now I was looking up uh, King Street. Hang on, that is King Street. And there's between there's, there's a, between Castle Road and. Well, and Walgreens. Oh, so a break now? Right. there are two areas. I mean, a break, like There's nothing. It, it, as is. So, so okay. Yeah. As is. So yeah. this is where oh. it stops here. I'm going to say that this is Prospect here. Okay. No, that's that's that's, that's the Castle Road. That's Castle Road. Or a Road. Castle Road yeah. here. Yeah. And then this is the area. Yeah. This is Walgreens. Yeah. Wall yeah. yeah. This is so 91 right? Bedford. Yeah. 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 Here's the firehouse over here. Okay. Right. So you're taking that and showing. Okay. Right. The so then we're doing 200 feet from those edges. Correct. From both sets of edges. Right. Anyway, something to look at. Okay. Yeah. Think about and so it. just to clarify, Tom, you want to go which way here? Well, I don't know. Are you coming back here? Further? 
Well, I think it's well, I, 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 I think what he was talking about was expanding the it's hard expanding the distance right. in all directions exactly. from the study area. Okay. Instead of two hundred feet, make it five half a mile. I mean, you know, yeah. Yeah. I okay. don't know how big it needs to be, but it, it depends yeah. on where you are. In some cases, it's a neighborhood, so maybe it's more than so then someplace expand, else, which expand might be which might be across yeah, Station it's, Road. It's which the two hundred foot number that's yep. probably no, that's the issue. I think, don't you think, John? Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what the number is. Right. Bigger. What? <laughs> so that, that was a general, and that I think applies to land use and zoning also. That was my thought on those two. And then I have one specific thing under, this is just a minor thing, under A2 anticipated impacts C. It says, it says anticipated impacts consistency and, compa and compatibility. Of the proposed zoning code, I'm not sure you can get both. You can get consistency or compatibility. What page was this? Six, six. Page five. Top of six. Okay. My page. Oh, I'm sorry. My one page five. The minor point. Consistency. Yeah. I don't think that I can put a comment in like that, though. Like what? Uh, you're not sure if you can achieve that. No, you just put and or. Oh, put the other town plans. Just and or, then you can. Gotcha. Did we agree on a minor thing? Plan. Did we agree okay. on a distance only the 200 feet? Yeah, the other sort of. Oh, this town. Yeah. yeah. I was wondering if this is the other town. This town. Okay. This town. Okay. Five. Five hundred. Okay. Are we going to do then 500 feet going back to the earlier comment instead of 200? You want 500 feet? No, I did. I just said expand distance beyond 200 feet. If you want 500 feet, I can add such as 500 feet. Well, the problem is with beyond 200, that's 210. I. Yeah. I think what they I would need say, to look at it. No, 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 no,
You know, I, I made a comment in general, but I think there's a new word that you guys use. I, I, I talk in terms of transitional code, transitional zones, yeah. and I think the new word is what the, 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 the document uses? I can't think of it right now. It uses transition. Now, there's another word that you mentioned. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, I, I think this whole thing with 500 neighborhoods, light bulbs, kind of stuff, it's, it's all about transitional zones. And to my, um, my reading of it, it doesn't take that into account. So I'm not going to sit there and say, you know, where it should be. But I think that is clearly something that's got to be looked at. I don't know what under, under what section, maybe all the sections, but the impacts for the transitional zone impacts are critically important to understand. So whether it's 500 feet, 1,000 feet, 200 feet, whether it's light, whether it's water, whether it's uh, stormwater drainage, which we haven't gotten to yet, all these things have got to be really understood in this uh, document, or not understood in the document, set forth in the document so we can understand it or study it. Um, I leave it to you where you find the spot. I'm on. Wrote it down. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Wrote it down because I don't have time to do it right I, now. I, Just say it. I got it. It will be done. I got it. Okay, I'm on B, uh, zoning. Yeah. Uh, three, mitigation procedures to expand, expedite implementation <laughs> of the proposed code. Is this actually, a, uh, I guess that's an ob objective that gets measured. I haven't heard that before in, a, in an EIS. Is that something which oh, is... The process is being the is subject to being an, analyzed. I, I would say that... The, the process is subject to being analyzed to be sure, I guess, to be yeah. sure that it's done properly, but is the, exped, the expediting of the process an objective? And I think that's... That's just a question for people who are smarter than I. Right. But it I may be, it may not be. I said you said smarter than I, and I felt really embarrassed about nodding. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you, because I don't know either. All right, so I agree with Tom. I mean, to me, that is not mitigation. It's, um, you know, you're trying to expedite something, but... Why do you need to mitigate that? Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. That's it right. is under mitigation, right. but the yeah. words yeah. bother me too. How is, how is procedure, how is that mitigation? Right. Well, Correct. exactly. No, I wrote right. here, this is not mitigation. It's right. You know, the what format has mitigation as C on every single one, so it could just be... It just fell into the... Because it always has to have... No, but it always has to have mitigation. That's required by law. You have to... Everything that's... Every significant impact you have, you have to mitigate it. Right. Or else you can't, you can't go... Through it. Well, the mitigation for zoning would not be the procedures. The mitigation That's the point. For, exactly. Right. Yeah, this would be, let me see if I could finish. The mitigation for zoning would be changing the zoning which is in place, which is, is I'm sorry, what would be the problems in the zoning that, that mitigation under this section would address? What would be the zoning problems that it would address? I don't know what they would be. Well, theoretically, wouldn't mitigation be... Like variances, wouldn't that be the mitigation of the effects of a given Could be. zoning provision? Could be. I mean, a, a, yeah, a variance or some or some other relief from uh -huh. the application of that zoning provision. Well, I wouldn't put into my zoning code things that are there that couldn't be properly resolved in the zoning code and just throw it over to the ZBA and say, you guys saw this next well, year. Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean variance capital V necessarily. Well, it would have but to the be kinds of The kinds of things that it would be some kind of device that would allow for variation or mitigation from the effects. That would have to be in the fuel process, which would have to go to, we're talking about property rights now, I think it'd have to go to the ZBA. I mean, I don't know, it's just, I just don't okay, know so, what Okay, so again, means. we're talking about solutions versus not. I think what I've done here, right. this is not mitigation, it seems to be in the wrong place or right. stated the wrong way. Should be more focused on the effect of the rezoning. Your experts and I put, Exactly. Right. So, so let's you. move on. Yep, yep. Good. Next page. Uh, I'm, does somebody have anything on C? Visual resources. I have uh, one B, documenting existing views in the study area, right? And I see South North Greeley, King Street, Solomon Parker, but Bedford Road. But it seems to me that we ought to also be looking at our gateway, the train station. That ought to be uh, 
that ought to be photographed and, and the impacts field. of that. Yeah, and the fields, I think, they have all the green spaces. Uh, the bridge, trip over the bridge, what's that look like? Yep. How's that work? It's good. Is the and bridge big enough? Uh, maybe this is, maybe this doesn't matter, but the railroad, the railroad platform, we have the Sawmill River Parkway, but that's, I don't think that's the same as standing on the railroad track and waiting for your train. So I just wonder if those three things ought to be put in there, because that's how most people come in and out of town, is to work. Maybe not most, but many. A lot of people spend a lot of time standing on that platform. So those are train station, the railroad, and the bridge for uh, well, maybe to put in for people to consider. And the green, the green area in the front right. of the station. Oh, oh yeah, yes. Oh, the, the, I mean, not the just circle. the building. You want the whole no, no, I meant the circle. I meant that area. Right, not, okay. the, not the building itself. You're right, exactly. Well, that's not changing, is it? No. The building? no. No, the building didn't change. I meant, I meant that circle, the Memorial Plaza or whatever. Memorial Park. Well, shouldn't we also be looking at, uh, in terms of view sheds, um, those that are outside of the hamlet, looking down into the hamlet? So from the top of the hill, the top of all the hills, uh, looking down, um, it seems to me that that's an important issue. And I think some people have already raised the, the issue about rooftops and designs, etc. but just if we have whatever it's going to be that we see from the top of the hill looking down at Langs, looking down from the top of, uh, you know, when 120 goes up to Quaker, um, up off of Hamilton, you know, what's it going to look like? Um, how can it be uh, mitigated? What, what's, uh, we, we work a lot with mitigation on this kind of stuff, on visibility and view sheds all the time, so what, what are we going to do? I don't know what the answer, but okay. Fine. But is this? It's there. Okay. Um, well, I think it just like that, you know? Hey, and you know, I can't be too rude. The, uh, and maybe this is a, a place where it goes and maybe it's too fine grain, but somewhere in here we, we do talk about, I think we do talk about some roof, roof lines. Uh, maybe it's further on in the document, but uh, I worry about roofscape here. Mm -hmm. And um, we're not only uh, should be concerned about uh, the things which normally pop up. Now we're going to, and maybe the town needs to work more on this, maybe not, but solar panels are going to be a big deal here. And they're going to be something that are going to be visually very apparent, and they are never, not ever, they're very rarely done well. And especially if people are looking down and looking mm -hmm. over, they're looking at all of this infrastructure, yep. which is not pretty to look at. And somehow maybe that ought to be if not specifically dealt with as a problem solution here, maybe downstream. I actually think the it town. is in here. Yeah. 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 Solar it panels is in, is in here. here. Okay. Do we talk about it alternatives of, of, of green roofs? Yeah. There, I'm sorry. There's, there's um, one more thing, sure. which is uh, we're going to have these are going to be elevator buildings. I mean, they're going to be four-story buildings. I, I'm not a market guy, but I don't think <laughs> a four-story residential <laughs> building without an elevator in it. More. You can do a three-story, but I don't think you do four. Cannot. So, as a consequence, um, they could they could be right. They could be uh, uh, pneumatic, which would mean you could have the machinery in the basement, but sometimes it's on the roof. They probably won't be traction because you don't need a traction elevator to go that high. But elevator penthouses ought to be something that is at stair least penthouses. It, Yes, and stair roof access, exactly. I have that in here also, roof access structures. So the, 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 the category of roof structure elements, I think, ought to include those things as well that, that they look at. And we have an understanding how that either is handled by, it, it needs to be handled somehow by the architectural design guidelines, and I don't see it in the architectural design guidelines here. I do. And Sabrina, back just on the, the shots, just, I mean, just to give them some clarification, like Sawmill Parkway. You know, you could take multiple pictures from the sawmill. So are we going to tell them we want one on the south side, if one on the north side? there's a specific location you So want. do we do that, or we just leave it up to them to take the best-looking shot that they're going to take? And if there's no specificity, then they're going to take the shot where the impact is the worst. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay, so they will take the shot where the impact is the worst. Correct. Okay. And you can ask for more, I imagine. I assume you can. Yes, which is why we're doing this laundry list of sites here. Okay. 
We're telling them these are areas we're concerned about, so when you choose your shots, this is what we want you to cover. And when they do this, they'll model what it looks like with the Chappaqua station. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see that? That's considerate. Usually though. impactful. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this has been edited to include notations of existing or under construction structures. Is uh, anybody who's next? I'm done until I'm done until F. I have on eight. Um, there is uh, under stormwater. I'm not quite sure it goes here, but um, one thing that we have found, especially up on King Street, of course, is uh, uh, stormwater is the infrastructure. Um, this it seems to me the drainage, the infrastructure drainage needs to be mapped. I mean, how many applications have we had where the applicant comes in and says, "I didn't know this pipe went here," and then we ask them to go look at it and survey it and see where it ends up and whose uh, whose property does it end up on? So we've had a couple of those. I don't. I think a lot of these things are on private property, but uh, to the extent that we can get this mapped and really fully understand, I suspect down in the valley downtown we have a pretty good understanding of all the piping. Well, wherever we did a new project, with right? The EOQ had done. We're getting them pretty comprehensive yep. as built. But on the hill, as, as we've had a couple of applications, and we've it's been stumbling blocks for applicants saying, "Well, wait a second, let's go," and then it goes across someone else's property. They have to get an easement. They can't get an easement. The project stops. So yeah. we need to understand those. And I think that it's a spider web up on the hill, frankly. Uh, I remember that one. Yeah. Anything else on E infrastructure? Because I, I have a comment on transportation. It looks to me, unless I'm mistaken, that the railroad is not included anywhere here as a transportation. And the impacts may be minimal. But it seems to me that it probably shouldn't be ignored as to the added ridership. <coughs> and that will fold into potentially more parking, although we're hoping everybody's going to walk to the railroad here. So maybe that's not it. Most people walk to the railroad here. But I did ridership, and I don't know whether bus routes and bus ridership has any impact here. But I just didn't. It says transportation. I didn't see those two modes in here. And most of it deals with, appropriately, deals with automobiles and uh, trip generation rates. And so, um, <clears throat> I'm, are you going to change eight? I, I just have one minor, minor thing. Under 3A. On which page? Or which? Eight. Page eight? Yeah. 3A, which what, what, three is what? 3 Alpha. Uh, we, we describe regulated wetlands, watercourses, and ponds. Great, and invernal pools, love them. Frogs, neat frogs there. Mm -hmm. um, based on the available mapping, then we identify development areas constrained by regulated wetlands or buffer areas. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't we also describe the buffer areas that are regulated, as opposed to just the, you know, the wetland itself? Um, you know, like the field. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, the field. It's the buffer it, that's the subject of most of the regulation. Yeah, sure. and it, the. The other thing is, does anyone know what the field was built on? I I have a feeling the whole thing was a swamp, and that it was the field. Right field <laughs> yeah, over yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. I uh, just it just feels like it, and it, it, it um, you know so that I would say that. You know, there might have been a swampy area too where the parking is. Yeah, this was the parking lot. I feel that that has to be really carefully looked at because it may change the cost significantly of any construction that's tall because it's a big weight load and you'll have to go to piles as opposed to you know, slab on grade. Oh, 90% of the buildings in town are on piles. Sorry, that, is, right. that is an expected condition. That. Okay, well then it, it should be noted, I think, somewhere yep. you know, that most buildings are built on piles in Absolutely. downtown. And I'm sure everything new in here will be on piles because the yeah. soils are yeah. terrible. The good news it's is when you go up the hill, it's it's not swampy. It's just total the rock. High ground. Okay. So if you don't see it being typed in, I'm actually making notes as well. Okay. So, I, so I've got uh, something that's been uh, uh, sort of bothering me for a little bit now. 
which is the parking ratios, and Bob already brought it up. Mm -hmm. Our consultant has said that for, has recommended that we revise our commercial parking ratios, and maybe it's specifically retail, from I think it's four per thousand to 2.8 per thousand, and has recommended we change our residential ratios for a one bedroom unit from 1.4 cars, spaces, uh, per unit to 1.1. So I'm happy to take those, those recommendations and move on them if I was certain that they worked for us. And if they're wrong about that, that is a, could end up being quite a big problem. And I just don't know how they, I forget how they justify that other than just saying, well, this is now the current industry practice. I guess they said that, but uh, well, forgive me for forgive me for getting forgetting the specifics of it, but but here is it. This is this is Chappaqua. I mean, we're in the suburbs. We're not sort of in White Plains. We're in the suburbs here, and people people drive here. And as a consequence, I'd be concerned that adopting those ratios maybe is something that we ought to look a little bit more carefully at before we load them in to an EIS <coughs> and say this is the measure of what works and doesn't work. Well, and, and to amplify that, the, the nice people from Toll Brothers have told us that they're building on Chappaqua Crossing, you need two garages. Two cars. Two car garages. So for the residential, um, that's not going to work out too well. Uh, you know, two versus 1.4 is a But the difference. product at Toll Brothers is completely different than the product that was being discussed. That's, that's true. Here. Well, yeah. that is true, but um, you're going to have at least 1.1 cars, you know, down there because it, no one's, everybody's going to have a car at least. Yes. And if they have a child, they're going to want another car at some point. So I think the 1.4 is probably more realistic. So this is this. everything that Eric has said, that you have said, that you have said is absolutely true. Right, everything I see at work every day is everybody, local zoning and ULI and everybody is trending to lower parking ratios across the board. But then again, you have people who live in reality like us who still know people need their cars and people still want their cars to go to here and there. So the, the professionals are telling us every day, lower your parking requirements, lower your parking requirements, but the market the people who are renting the apartments, the people who are going to the stores, right. and the people working in the right. businesses still need their car to get there. So here, two, two. So it is a bump up. It's one of these. Right, and here, here too, I think there's evidence that maybe this isn't working. Is that the proposals maybe are not really on? Is that I come down here not as often as I mean you guys work down here, but I come down here every once in a while, and this parking lot uh, over here behind all these stores, it's almost always full. The lot which is uh, over there off of the foot of King, it's almost always full. Mm -hmm. And that's for the amount of retail we have here. And I don't understand how we're going to add 20,000 square feet of retail and park those cars. <coughs> and on top of that, put 500 housing units where I don't know where the cars are going to be. Well, one of the issues that we've gone through right from the very beginning on this, and I think it really goes to the scope of what I was saying before, is that one of the assumptions, I believe, was that the, they were given instructions that there's to be no net loss in parking. I think that that alone, that assumption and that target is it's nowhere tough. near what it should be because we're introducing growth, activity, vitality. Yep. I think that's way too low a benchmark and that what we really need to be looking at, I don't know what the ratios are, 1.4 to 1.7, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think as a, just a general goal, again, going back to the very beginning, <coughs> an alternative assumption is assume that we need a 20% increase in, in parking. So, so again, For I, just I'm, I'm pulling you back out of the weeds. I know. Yeah. Okay, I have thing. incorporated this in the scope, in the, under the transportation <laughs> section. Describe existing parking requirements, parking ratios, and then discuss the revised parking ratios, assumptions of changes, Etc. Okay, so it, it, this is an add to the scope. So, uh, 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 oh, I see right there. Okay, yep, great. In okay. two places, existing and change. So, no, no. I'm, 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 I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Just where where is that new language? Discussion uh, yeah. of revised parking ratios, assumptions, 
And it's up here under existing impacts. Okay, they, they need to justify that, I think. Okay. Right, existing right. parking requirements. So um, the, um, oh, I'm sorry, Bob, you had something? Yeah, I had something else on parking, which is, again, um, I've been talking about this for a while. And I'm not quite sure where it goes, with, whether it's 10 Just or 11. Shout it out. But on parking, um, I think one of the alternatives that needs to be explored is on-site parking. Below a ground, whatever it might be. I've said it a couple of times what Pleasantville is doing. Anything going up in Pleasantville must be on site parking. It anticipates the reality that a parking structure here may eventually be built, but that's going to be a long time. And in the meantime, you're going to have this, this it, collision. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I totally agree. We, we have 1,000 new cars minimum, maybe 3,000 yeah. if somehow they can figure out how to do you know, 3,000 uh, new units. I, mean, I understand the soils are tough. That has to be something that I think. Bob rated before, uh, talked about before, so the soils have to be looked at in connection with that, but for example, in Pleasantville, it's all rock, it's marble, and they're blasting it out, so it's just the opposite. It's very expensive, but that has been what they've been told to do, and they're doing it. So, so the mitigation, um, the mitigation strategy, which is already built into, it's not really specifically called a mitigation strategy, but by implication it is, they built into the draft, has been built into the draft code is that you can park your car, you can take a shuttle to your car, and you can do remote parking. There's several parking. different mitigations. But no, I'm, I'm talking about those specifically, and I, they can go ahead and try and propose this in the EIS, but I can't imagine that flying. I can't imagine somebody moving to Chappaqua and saying, to get my car, to go to the grocery store, i got to get on a shuttle bus and go get my car. They're going to live in Manhattan if they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, one more thing, there are other strategies here that have to do with like stackers, parking garages with stackers in them. Now that was something that was discussed in the meetings we had with mm -hmm. the consultant, but I guess if they want to come up with a strategy that says that you can put a parking garage with stackers in it, I think it's the same thing. I can't imagine anybody living here and needing to call up the parking lot and say, get my car now. You do that when you live in Manhattan, you call the garage, bring it out. So I think it's, <coughs> we're thinking of, we're, we're addressing a different market for our residential, not only in those mitigation measures, but I think I think also in the parking ratios. I think it's a big thing. So we put the parking ratios in here. Again, let's back out of trying to do the analysis and, and the mitigations that will end up changing the code. We put it in here to benchmark it, to be analyzed, and we know where you want it to go, but we're not there yet. So a question. So I remember that they've always been pitching a district parking strategy. Correct. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, yes or no, to be determined. But you just suggested something very different, that no district, you park on the site. So are we asking them to study that as an, yeah, as an alternative? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Good point. So everything they develop would have to be self-parked. Correct. Its as well, I, would, I would make the assumption, and I'm going to talk beyond scope right now. Mm -hmm. I would make the assumption that parking is an issue that will need to be dealt with in, outside of the code in relation to the existing parking district agreements mm -hmm. that the town currently holds with downtown property owners or folks within the business retail parking district. Yeah, I would also make the assumption that we will probably not see development unless folks can park it. Okay? As it is today, we do not see a lot of development because people cannot park it. Yep. So, you know, part of what is built in here is a utilization study regarding the town held parking lots. We need to understand how much of that is being parked and during what time of day that is being parked to know whether or not that can be offered up as mitigation or what kind, how much mitigation. But ultimately, what we're going with the whole process is all about is trying to initiate vitality in Correct. Hamlet. So therefore, we really have to have these guys look at, in the EIS, I believe, the, the way to get the vitality. And that means exploring all these alternatives uh, now because you're not going to get vitality or interest unless you have a provision now because you might have a parking garage in 10 years, 5 years, I don't know. But yeah. you need something now because <coughs> something's going to happen first. Correct. Well, so. and, and to, to add to that, if if you use a, if you get a thousand cars or eleven hundred cars mm -hmm. or fourteen hundred cars, 
you can't have them in lots mm -hmm. far away. They have to be in the building. Yep. Absolutely. I, okay, li good. Listen, again, we're talking we're about solutions. Solutions. Let's move on. That's all right. Let's move on. I got to go back one step. Under sanitary uh, sewer and wastewater. Okay. What page? Eight, no, I'm sorry, nine, three, B. Um, or three A and B, the whole thing. One thing that has to be done, one thing to, to check the system in the, the area, the study area. But our wastewater from downtown goes to Yonkers, and Yonkers controls whether you can have additional capacity or not. And so that has to be a really carefully but thoroughly uh, done set of questions with Yonkers as well. Can you uh, handle another... Uh, uh, you know, 300,000 gallons a day from us. Well, yeah, we got, uh, you know, we, we handle 30 million, million gallons a day or whatever it is. Well, more importantly, will. I but can, 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 but will they give, give it to us? Wasn't that the issue with Chappaqua Crossing Absolutely. at some point? Yeah, and we were able to get a small amount for that. It's not a thousand, we don't have a thousand, you know, homes being built there. And then can we add, I don't know if this is appropriate, Doing all this work in the downtown, we tap into Yonkers, does that totally eliminate Millwood from ever getting into sewers if we ever get the chance to do oh, sewers in Millwood? That's a neat issue. Does yeah. Chappaqua kill Millwood? Wow. As a regional manager of the county's wastewater, when we have posed questions like this to Westchester County, there has yeah. never been a killing one part of town for the other part. Killing's the wrong word, I apologize. Yeah, I, 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 listen, I think it's a good point. Let's yeah. put it in the scope. Let's make sure it's addressed. Okay, well, not just Millwood, but other areas that are. Well, Millwood was in the compress. I think the number one thing in Millwood was to get sewers in Millwood. No, it was to study the technical and financial feasibility of, of sewering okay. in Millwood. But the, they town, were, they were, the town they board connected a technical. <laughs> The town board conducted a technical feasibility analysis oh. and a financial feasibility analysis, and it was determined that unless somebody else is putting in the main line for, for Millwood to connect to, and even then, the development would be um, not in keeping with the character of the community to do sewers. You'd have to have so much development. That's a big issue right there. So, and so okay, that knocked but, it out of the box from a financial perspective. So you lost me on that one. Yeah. So you would have to do enough. You would have to do so much development to pay for the cost of the sewer connection. Correct. But now, so then, I think your issue is, is still fair now to, to measure that and that, that's your important right. scope. And that study was done. I'm sure it'd be relatively easy it, for them to take right. that study and understand. Right. Yeah. If the there is excess sewer process. capacity in Yonkers, how much of it does, does our town get? Can expect and how do we divide that up? Um, so, I just have one thing, and um, Bob, maybe you'll be helpful on this. The um, and I hate to go back to parking, but I need to just for a second. That the parking ratios, I guess, are being driven down by the consultants, and I I, I understand the the reason behind that initiative. But are the trip generation rates that ITE puts out changing, or are they staying the same? Do you know? Because I don't know all fans, but because uh, the trip generations rate, rates tell you how many cars there are, because people are getting their cars and using them, and when they bring those cars back, I don't back. know that answer all fans. Uh, maybe when the new publications come out, whether they go up or down, I don't know. Okay, I can answer that. Because that's a pretty good indicator of how many cars you can expect. That's what most of the traffic engineers use. Right. Okay. But whether that went up or down over the past publication, I do not know. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I have something on community facilities, H. The only comment is... What page is that? Oh, I 12, 12. H. I have the old one. It's 10 online. Um, oh, I have the old one. Wait, which, which section, I'm sorry? Which That's section? H, community, community facilities. facilities. H. And it just seems to be that something's missing here because there's been a conversation about it and there's actually one in the hamlet, which is community center. It seems to me that that ought to be on the list somewhere. That's a good point. Well, I think uh, also what would be good in this area, Sabrina, would be not and just the, the existing, but as we heard from the from the from the people who participated in this whole uh, process with the the, uh, the plan, um, I think not just the status the status quo, but what the needs are. 
And, and again, that's got to be looked at in terms of the study. I mean, we have certain needs, like Tom said, the community center, and where's it going to, you know, they can look at it and say what the impact will be if we relocate it, if it really becomes uh, much more vital and uh, usage goes up and we expand hours or whatever it might be. So I think the needs, um, which were articulated when I went to those sessions pretty well, uh, people were talking about specific needs. It's, this is nice that we have this, um, this, this menu of things that we currently have, but I think, again, this is a plan for a code that's supposed to be a living code that should be anticipating what the future needs are. And that whole thing on parking again should, in, going back to parking, but also going through the very beginning, should also be done uh, with an eye toward the generic public asset. Actually, can I ask a question? I mean, you just said something about a living code, and so what I'm a little bit confused about with this form-based code is how much flexibility is there within the form-based code once it's established. That's what I'm there, a It's not a living about. code. It's a code that will be living for a long time without being changed. That's what I thought. Yeah. So really, it's bringing life. It's anticipating That's what, you're doing. It's an what could happen in the future, but we're not, I mean, so what? Exactly. We, th there's only one area of the community that we can say is dictated by public opinion, and that would be public property. Okay? And everything else is privately held. If they can meet the requirements within the code, then they can redevelop their properties. If they can't meet the requirements, such as parking, then they cannot take advantage of the requirements in the code to the fullest extent. Okay. Um. I'm on H12, H12, okay. and the, you know, we have, uh, we mentioned a couple in uh, 1 and 2, F in both cases, you know, we say electric and nat natural gas service. Now, I know both electric and has some troubles because of Con Ed and how they've managed things over the years. Uh, natural gas service, is there any, is the question. Well, and, and this this benchmark is here for that. I can say. And do we need to talk about data, telephone, cable? Does that get? No. Okay. I don't believe so. No. All right. I'm just asking. I don't and know either. I'm down an I now. I see under socio socioeconomics. Well, actually, Oops. anticipated impacts of uh, these services. Uh, we talked about this a little bit. Um, what are going to be the impacts and do they need to study for the 5G that might be coming our way? Because we looked at that and there's a substantial impact in terms of uh, visibility and issues and you know all the number of antennae that will be required for, for 5G. Yeah, it should be incorporated into the design. Communications, information technology ought to be on the yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, can, I see your point and I tend to agree with it. It's not really impacted by this alone. No, it's coming. Right? It's coming. But I think you have to anticipate it because it's going to be a feature that we have to work with and deal well, with. Well, it becomes an opportunity to do it right. And, okay. with yeah. and do you have more elaborate facilities along those lines? Yeah. If you're Certainly increasing, more of them, I'll tell you If that. you're increasing yeah. the density in a given service area? Yeah, you, ah. can, you can have one in your backyard That's if point. you want it. Well, they told us something like Peter or something. Yeah, but John's point is when you increase your in intensity of, uh, of users, because you're just going to have more and more infrastructure needs. We don't know. Right. I mean, no, does I it have to be reasonable or something? Is yeah, it that's more, what they'll does have it to, have tell to us be, when they yeah. study it. Does the infrastructure have to be more elaborate to serve right. a more dense area? Yeah. You know, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know the technology either. of you know, how they're developing the 5G, but. Uh, I don't actually going back. I don't see it in here. Maybe I missed it, but it's, I don't see it under infrastructure utilities. Is there anything on electricity and telecommunications? Well, not up in that front section. I think it's because the town doesn't do electricity. Well, we don't do it, but it's it, but it's going to come. Right, right. We I need think to understand what the impacts are. Cable yeah. TV is going to come. Yeah, they're going to be bringing the stuff in. Five G telecommunications needs for increased density. Excellent. Okay. Let's move on. Well, that would be a mitigation.
It's great to have you here. Are we on uh, I now? Yes, if you are. Yes, I am. Okay. Demographics. Curious, why only are we looking at school age? It's not children? only looking at school age, it's, it's, it's call out saying, please make sure you include school age children. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> okay, I'm off that page. It's on under socioeconomic <laughs> conditions on page 13. Does anything in. Um, or it could be tw page 12. Okay. In any uh, public housing initiatives, uh, workforce housing, all those different categories that, that we sometimes uh, strive to accommodate here, do those get looked at in here? We have a requirement right now in our code for affordable housing. That requirement is mirrored in the form-based zoning code and references the existing requirement. There has been discussion, which I have noted, but I haven't incorporated in the scope, about increasing um, the affordable housing requirements and workforce requirements okay. due to the new county um, numbers. Um, but it's not. It's not measured in here. It's not measured okay. in here. Right, and I think I think we noted in one of our meetings that um, the proposal from Eric's team actually was reducing that requirement. I Correct. think you raised the issue. Wait a second, we don't want to go backwards. Correct, and yeah. so so it is now consistent with the town's requirement. Um, and I know that the town supervisor attended a, an update on affordability in the county and new requirements. Um, there is some discussion about changing, but right now it is consistent with other areas of the town. And it actually references that separate section. There's no sense in working on it under the form-based code. Okay. Under hazardous materials. Okay. Thirteen. Uh, what you have here is, is fine. Um, I, I suspect that there are some older buildings that don't exist in the NASDAQ site remediation database because buildings have been there forever. Um, certainly, you can see the remediation efforts going on at the gas station at the corner. When the west one on the other corner, I believe there was remediation also. Oh, yeah. But yeah, there... Is that remediation or are they just replacing just, their tanks? Oh, no, in the corner, well, they're they replacing they their tanks because of a reason. Because, of the, yeah. because, they're, because they're leaking. It's leaking. It's lust. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we still have a gas station up the top of the hill, and there are dry cleaners all over the place. And they may not have been in the same buildings, but I think there has to be something to be done to alert you know that. Uh, what about asbestos and lead-based paint? And if we have old buildings in town offices. that are going to be replaced, dentist dental offices, uh, and um, let's see. So is your question that these things need to be accurately mapped? To be yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the building that we can put a, something into John's comment is you know, put in there that that consideration on rebuilding or knocking down buildings have to cons have to consider lead paint and asbestos issues from the past. And, um, well, we're going to require, as part of the code, that they have to undergo a phase one on each site? I, I believe that there are requirements already under the state building codes that require... Okay. So they, they may not do it in a study, but they, you know, they can map some of these things. Not, they don't have to do the whole thing. Also, I, I gasoline, gasoline when, they demolition, when they do demolition of a building, the building inspector requires them to do a environmental study and a report to make certain that the asbestos is taken care of. You have to do, do, full phase you have to do the history yeah. of the building. building. You have to yeah. know the history of the stuff like that. Okay. Building. Building. What standard building permits? Like, so something I'm not quite sure what the right words are. Building permit, you need to start with a demo. Yeah. Absolutely. Phase one. Okay. Then, then I go to K. Air quality. I believe that if we don't have natural gas for these new buildings in the valley, not so much the ones on the top of the hill, uh, we are going to have an air pollution problem because we're going to be burning fuel oil for them to work. And I think we will need something more than a qualitative description of existing air quality data. I think it has to be somewhat quantitative so that yeah. calculations then can be done. Well, okay, we're adding a thousand building uh, housing units. 
what's, what's going to be the heating system. <coughs> if we can't get gas, that, that becomes a problem. Is there gas in the street now? Yes. Yes, there is. So oh, they just put in new gas. gas. So we have, this. this area has natural gas. Yes. Yes, but is it enough? Well, that's part of the... That's part of the study. That's, that's the study yeah. that. Yeah. And if it, if it isn't, then they have to go to fuel oil. Okay. And if it isn't, then fuel oil would be the consequence of that, and then they'd have to measure that as part of the study to see if they can mitigate for it if it's a problem. That's right, and so to do that, you need to know so, what the baseline so is. folks, I want to call it on time. Yep. Okay, okay, well done. I have one more. One more. I'd be happy to listen to it. I have a couple of things on page 14. Mine is at the very end. It's, uh, uh, it's on the uh, alternatives. Yeah, uh, me too. So I, I was, again, going to harp on the same thing I've been harping on, which is, you know, adding F, and that is, again, the full alternative for the public asset. Um, looking at this as one of the alternatives. Full build out with recognition that there could be a public uh, asset. Uh, and then the other is I have, uh, I'm unaware of, under, is it Roman numeral, I think it's V, but V, the wealth inducement. Um, I never. That's I think inconsistent with our plan. I, I, I am un, unaware of any sort of growth inducement where people say we want growth, they want vitality, but it's not growth itself. So I think that's a that's a wording thing, and I think that's heading us off on the wrong track, frankly. I agree. So, yeah, I have that note also. What do you growth want to change to? Vitality, uh, increased vitality, not growth. Growth on it by itself, I think, is is not what we were after. It's not what our comp plan was all about. So yeah, that would um, call it increased social economic vitality, which we used earlier in some of the discussions, right, and it right, shows yeah. up once or twice. I, I, in her yeah. new notes. I, I think the comp plan really talked about Hamlet vitality, even socioeconomic, may constrain it too much. It could be right. recreational, it could be other, all kinds okay. of things. We didn't want really bigger. We'll take better. out the word economic on increase. Yes, thank you. We don't want to increase. We want to increase <laughs> vitality. Could you vitality. scroll back up to Bob's F? Yeah, uh, just a question on the full build-out scenario. Do their full build-out scenarios contemplate parking all the town cars? I'm pretty sure. I don't know that. I can't answer that. I haven't seen okay. it. When you say town cars? Yeah, I mean the people who are out there now. Do, their, do the full build-outs contemplate that whatever gets built there, they got to they got to take care of all those cars too. That would be the impact they'd have to mitigate for. Uh, yeah. Whatever that might be. Yeah. Because I'm wondering, you know, you're thinking about let's like save a spot for a coming attraction. Are they saving a spot for all the people in the town that park here? Yeah. So I have one more thing just at the very end, which has to do with the alternatives. And maybe this gets partly back to what Bob was saying, which is that they're really only, there's no action, right? That's required by the yeah. way you have to have that. And I don't know how you measure that. That's the existing Status condition. Well. No, I know that. I know what it is. I don't know how you measure it. Does that mean that you project how much development can happen under the existing zoning in order to measure those right. impacts? Are they? Yes, I understand that's it's what that means. Right. Are they going to do that, right, and make assumptions based on the existing zoning? That would be, right, so they're going to go ahead and do that, right? And then it says building under, that's no action, right? Then there's building under existing zoning, which is B, right? And then there's C, full build out. And I just, I just happen to think that, I think that somebody said we're at a thousand units now. I can't imagine how that's ever going to happen down here. I just, I can't because the slug of land that takes to get you there is, I think, the land, a lot of it is the land that we're on now, the public land. And that is a big hit to the marketplace. It's a big hit to all the accumulated impacts. I'm just wondering if there's another alternative which says build out on private land and then a full build out with the public land. It seems to me that that might be you know, a rational way to go because those are two sense. dramatically different development scenarios. Sure. Right. I think it makes sense. And it doesn't trigger dealing with all the cars at the train station. Just do it it clarifies cars. things a it's lot. Fourteen hundred cars. Right. Yeah. If you just do it on the private land, it's going to be a completely different what if compared to everything. Everything. I, I'm afraid it's going to throw everything out of the. I don't think you. Yeah, I don't think you yeah, have yeah. to really build everything. Right. That's interesting. I think that would you know, help. 
I had one very general uh, comment, and, and that was really a language one. Um, throughout the, the, the code, there is reference to urban. I think that's a bad word that, that what we should word? not use. Urban. 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 urban, you know, tests, urban standards. I would substitute anytime we see urban for hamlet or village. Uh, urban, I think, uh, to me, just makes me gag well, as soon as I see the word urban, urban was in connection with the Chappaqua Hamlet. So uh, maybe I'm overreacting, but no, I, I tend not. to think other people would react right. very similarly. No, you're so, not. Right. We're suburban. Right. Yes, yeah. and so I don't think at best. Uh, I know Eric used that a number of times <laughs> in the code, the proposed code. Yeah, it, what's interesting is that it's it's part of this uh, form based code uh, um, um, body of work which says that there's something we read about it and you and I knew about it a long time ago, something called the transect, which is mm -hmm. going from country to city. And in that, that transect, as soon as you get out of the suburbs, transect, yeah. they go right to urban. They don't go to town, they go right to urban. And even in three and four story uh, uh, environments, they go to urban. And it sends the wrong message, I think. I think Bob's right. And if it would mean them going into the code and taking urban out of their sac sacrosanct transect uh, descriptions and just insert another word. It makes I think Hamlet's a great word. Okay, guys, you're, 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 cha you're, you're working again. Child, the okay, solution sorry. there, I got the comments. <laughs> okay. I think it's an easy fix, you got the to be quite honest okay. with you, but I, I like, think we're good. I, like I think John I one has one question, comment, comment, and then I'm going to summarize because there's other folks here and you may have additional comments. So go ahead, John. All right, on the alternatives, D. Is the full build out with a height reduction? Who it, did this come from? A question from a comment it came from, from somebody. A comment from the public. I'd like to suggest another one that we do a build out with a maximum of three stories. So an alternative height reduction. An alternative height reduction. Yeah. Yeah. Very good idea. Either D one and D two or yeah. D yeah. and E. Yeah. yeah. I'll go down to G, John. Okay. <laughs> any, any other quick comments? No. Okay. So if there are additional comments, I welcome you to email them to me. I will work them into your draft scope, your track change scope, so that you will have it. I'll try and get it out to you by Friday, so you can review it prior to your meeting on Tuesday with the hope of adopting your changes on Great. Tuesday. I also, due to some of the nature of your comments, I will also do a memo, a cover memo, to your track change version of the scope, so that you can summarize some of the comments that don't fit in neatly. That would be great. Terrific. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank Thank you. Discussion. Thank you, too. Um, you talk to Dennis? Good night. 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 Good